Welcome back, everybody. It is your host, Brent Daniels, and welcome back to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast. We are so excited today, but you know what? I want to kick this off right. I want to kick this off fast, and I want to kick it off with a little bit of mindset. I want to read out of this book by Dean Graziosi called The Success Habits, and just bear with me because I think it's important to listen to this. I once heard a fable about a a Navajo woman who told her grandson a story about how we all have two wolves that live inside of us, constantly battling one another. It starts with the grandma's grandmother sitting her grandson down and explaining to him that one of the wolves is jealous, has envy in his soul, is malicious, and has a scarcity mindset. To that wolf, everything in the world is wrong and unpleasant. He believes that people are mostly bad, things are no good, and that the world is a cold place. As you can imagine, nothing good ever happens for that wolf because it is negative, pessimistic animal, always seeing things as glass half empty. Then the woman says to her grandson, but you also have a different, powerful wolf that lives inside you. This wolf has empathy, love, compassion, positivity, and knows it can accomplish anything it puts its heart and soul into. This wolf sees the bright side of everything and constantly sees things glass half full. And grandson, this wolf, the powerful wolf, can take you to so many amazing places. Then the grandson looks at his grandma and says... Well, which wolf wins the battle, Grandma? She replies, the one you feed, grandson, the one you feed. Boom! Are you kidding me? I absolutely (laughs) love that because I think it's absolutely true. I think if you live with abundance in your heart, if you live with collaboration and not competition, this business is just absolutely incredible. And I've got got really an incredible story. Uh, I'm interviewing a a phenomenal uh, real estate wholesaler builder uh, specializing in land here on the podcast today from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, Mr. Steve Kaiser. Steve, say hello to everybody. What's up, everyone? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And I really, you know, before this interview, Steve and I were just talking and we, we kind of, and we're going to go through his whole story, but you can definitely tell that, um, you know, when it comes to this, the, to feeding the positivity or feeding that winner part of you, that, that, the winner, that pilot light inside of you that says that you can do this. Steve is a perfect example of this because he really went through a lot, you know, from his youth to growing up and, and going through and, 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 and becoming the entrepreneur that he is. So, Steve, give us some background on you. Tell us where you're at. Tell us how old you are. Tell us how long you've been in this business. Give us your background. Cool. Yeah, so I am uh, 28 years old. I've been in real estate since the start of 2015 as a residential realtor. Mm -hmm. Uh, I did that for about two years, saw that it was not for me. I hated driving people around and then telling them telling me that they were going to rent after three months of uh, wasting time with them, uh, selling a $200,000 house and getting two grand for it, uh, all these fees and stuff. So I saw my broker in charge making five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 on these $30,000 houses, just assigning them over to investors that he knew personally and would go get beers with and hang out with after and just have a really nice relationship with them. And I was like, this is what I want to do. Uh, so I jumped into it around the very end of 2016, handwriting yellow letters, about 500 a week, handwriting the envelopes, um, put my own stamp on them, sending them out, taking my own calls. I mean, it was, it was rough, but you know, I got my first deal that way. I love it. And what'd you do before you became a realtor? Give us, give us the, yeah. So, uh, yeah. in 2010, I got kicked out of, out of college for academic probation That 1.7 GPA just wasn't cutting it. Um, so I floated around for a while. I, Washed cars for about four years, uh, got promoted to assistant manager. They were about to hand me the store after the store manager got fired. And I knew that that was my decision. You know, I was either going to get stuck in this life or I was going to go out and just sink or swim, basically. So I turned around and looked at all the employees. I was like, hey, guys, I'm clocking out. Uh, All you guys can come with me, uh, but I'm out. And I'm the only one that didn't go back. I sold stuff from Goodwill on eBay. I fixed broken iPhones for a year. I just did pretty much anything I could to pay the bills. Luckily, I was staying in my grandparents' old house, so I didn't have to pay any rent. So the bills were cheap. Um, then I ended up getting my real estate license, thinking that was going to be the answer to everything. Uh, and it, it was just the start. It just opened the door. 
um, to the next door and then the next door and the next door and the next door and then here we are. Yeah. How so you go from you 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 get uh, kicked out of college to uh, working at a car wash to selling things on eBay? How's how's the mindset? How do you pull yourself out of that? And how did you know that it was the right decision? <laughs> to say no to like a career in this? Cause I, I assume as a manager of one of these shops or as a district manager or whatever, there's room to go up or at least there's a decent income there. Right. I mean, what is it? What, what does a manager make? Yeah. So at that store, he was making about 60 grand a year. He got a company car, he got benefits. I mean, they took care of him. It was, you know, if you're looking for that type of thing, it was a, a good opportunity. Um, but the two years previous to that, I had been really big into Jim Rohn. Uh, Les Brown. And on my lunch breaks, I would just pound their YouTube videos. I mean, I was, I'm getting cold chills right now just because I'm starting to feel that way that I was back then. Uh, it, was, it was a very dark place for me. Um, a lot going wrong with my family, a lot going wrong with my personal life. So just a kind of a dark time. Uh, and I just clung to Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins, Les Brown. I read everything I could. I listened to everything I could. Uh, all my friends were not this way at all. And I was, it was a constant battle of trying to pull myself up and get drugged right back down. Yeah. Um, so it was, you know, it was ups and downs. It was definitely not this one, di- one day everything clicked and then I was there. It was, I mean, I got journal entries of me saying, you know, one day I'm going to be a real estate investor from 2014. Um, I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to. Yeah. And I, I sit back and read them now. Like <laughs> at the time I had no, it looked, dim and dark and like it was hopeless but you just keep going just wake up every day and just try to do something i love it i love well and i totally agree with you i mean i think that there is so much to be said about reading really good books surrounding yourself with really good like audio when you're driving around or even when you're just sitting there and you have downtime you can throw your headphones in watch it on your phone now like i haven't i haven't listened to music in my car and probably eight years for real like it's just it's just a great opportunity to fill your mind in with such great uh information and 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 instruction but also inspiration right i mean there's there's that part of it that you know what It, it, it 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 doesn't necessarily like I think if it makes you take some action in your life, like you ended up that, that whole sentence with uh, the action you take, the little things, even a little bit each yeah. day to get you towards that. That's what this is all about. It's just those little things every 100%. single day. That's why we break it down into just a simple three letters of talk to people. It really yeah. you can start, right? I mean, literally, you can literally start talking to people today. You know what I mean? Like, yep. and I think that's kind of what you did. So kind of walk us through your evolution from driving around as a real estate agent, you know, getting, you know, going through that whole thing, because being a real estate agent, let's be honest, that just means that you have a different boss every week and they're looking for yeah. something to do in this and they might like it. They might not like it. They might buy something. They might sell something. They might not. Right. So kind of go through that. You <laughs> saw, you saw your broker doing essentially wholesale deals and then was he yeah. open? Did he share with you? Did he get training? Did you find it yourself? Oh, yeah. So he, he definitely shared what he was doing. And he, um, you know, he told me certain people in the market, you're like, hey, you need to know this person. Um, he's having a meeting next Tuesday. Go to it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I go to it. And then, you know, I danced around for a while after getting to know some of these people. You know, what should I do? Should I, should I do direct mail? Should I do bandit signs? Like, what should I do? Uh, and I was sitting at the table at one of these, RIA meetings and I had the bandit sign uh, ready to check out and buy them on my phone. I was like, guys, I can't, like, I can't justify spending $500 on bandit sign. Yeah. And they were like, dude, you got to do something. Like if you don't do anything, you're not going to get anything. So I bought them right there. I put them out. I didn't get any deals from it, but then I started doing handwritten letters. I didn't know about templates or anything like that. I, but I was a realtor so I could pull a list of, absentee owners. That's all I had. So I right. pulled some absentee owners. I just started handwriting 500 a week. Um, and I started that in November of 2016. And by February 17th of 2017, I had a lady call me. Um, she lived out of, out of town. She had a house that was in uh, for pre, basically pre foreclosure for taxes. Um, she owed 10,000 in taxes. I offered her 12. She took it <laughs> I turned around and put it on Craigslist for 22. I had a buyer that day. And then about 10 days later, I got a wire for 10 grand and I was 
my mind exploded. <laughs> like, I, 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 man. Right? It's the best feeling in the world. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's that crazy. first time that you get five-figure check, it's like, oh, my gosh. And then it starts ratcheting. I'm telling you, it really does tra- change your brain chemistry. It does. I started dressing different on appointments. I wouldn't wear a collared shirt anymore. I just started wearing really nice jeans and a T-shirt. I was yep. like, I have, like, I can't do this. I have no one to impress. So, and then about two weeks later, I got another one for eight grand. Yep. Um, and then, then I ended up locking up two lots about two weeks later. Awesome. So let's get into this a little bit because you actually have some real estate background, right? Your family has some real estate background, I should say. So yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of talk about that. Yeah, so my dad, he's been a general contractor since the, the early 90s, ever since I can remember, uh, building houses, custom houses, spec houses, subdivisions, townhomes. I mean, at one point he owned, I think it was 30 townhome units that he had built himself. Um, so I, I definitely know the lingo and the process of everything. And, and that's something that I kind of take for granted because I don't realize how much I do know in that field. Um, but... Yeah, so I've been around it for a while. Um, he got hit pretty hard in 2009 when the market tanked. He had two subdivisions that he had uh, going on and, and lost, lost everything on that. Yeah. But to me, it, that's what kind of made me want to go into wholesaling even more because the liability aspect of things, you're not, you're not stuck with all this debt over your head. Uh, so if, if the market does take a sudden turn, you know you're not stuck with a, a $2 million loan to Bank of North Carolina or whoever it is. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing I like about wholesaling. Um, but yeah, so after he got hit pretty hard, we went through that period of me you know, looking for jobs and working at the car wash. And the market started to get better. I saw an opportunity to get him back into building. Um, so I started, once I got the wholesaling thing kind of going, knew it was possible, lots started to pop up. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time they started to pop up, I happened to run across a hard money guy through the RIA. Uh, so if you want to know how to find money, just network. There's someone you know who knows someone. So yep. Um, yep. Got, a, got, got connected with him um, and just started taking down lots. I mean, the first one I bought, I still own it. It was the worst decision I've ever made. I've <laughs> probably lost two grand on it, but it's what started everything. And we've built probably 15 houses since then. So if I never would have made that mistake, I may not have 15 houses already built and sold by this point. I love it. I love it because we are getting into something that I think is huge coming down the pipe with with uh, going after raw land. I mean, it yeah. is, and, and, and we were talking about this before, it is the easiest wholesale deals I've ever done in my entire life because there's no 100%. houses, there's no buildings, there's no, I mean, there's nothing. It's either you want the land or you don't want the land, right? But there are yep. a few things that you need to know about the land to, to be able to effectively communicate what people can do with it. So, I mean, yeah. you, you've done a bunch of these. Tell me some of the things, like if, somebody's, if somebody has their, an opportunity right now to find a piece of land in their town, what things should they know to see if it's worth them going after? So for my area specific, and I don't, I don't know how it is other parts of the country, yep. but my big thing is checking whether or not it has city water, city sewer. Um, that's big because if it's well and septic, it usually just causes a, a little more headache and a lot of builders won't touch it because right. it takes a little longer. Yep. Um, so find out if it has city water, city sewer connections. And then give your, give your uh, city a call and just find out how much that costs. So if you do, one, so you know, um, because if you have a lot that's only worth 15 grand, knowing a builder could have to be in it less than 15 and the seller wants 14 for it, and you know you got to put five grand to connect the city water and city sewer tabs, you know you're kind of backwards on that one. You need to get it cheaper. Yeah. Um, but other than city water sewer, you want to make sure the topography is flat. If it's a hole and they're going to have to bring a lot of fill dirt in, that's called. Um, or a basement lot, you know, that's basement lots don't really sell as well here as they do, uh, flat lots. Uh, what is it zoned? Um, some zoning only requires 50 foot lot width on the front. So if you have a lot that's a hundred foot wide and the zoning's 50 foot, you just got two lots. So if they want 15 for it and you know, each lot is worth 15, you just made 15 grand. And I've done this before. I, I didn't actually wholesale it. I just kept it because it was such a good deal. But subdividing land is a great way to add value to land and make some money. I'm sorry, my dog is bothering <laughs> me with a tennis ball right now. Yeah. Uh, 
And other than the setbacks, the zoning, um, is it in a floodplain? Most builders won't mess with anything in a floodplain because you're going to have to jump through a lot of hoops yep. to either For get insurance. it out of the floodplain yep. or just mm -hmm. environmental um, things. And then some areas are in historical zones. You know, you may not be able to build certain things. Um, maybe it's in a area where they require the house to be 1,800 square foot minimum and you think someone can come in there and build a 1,200 square foot house. So you, you just got to check a, a lot of different things. But the main ones, honestly, are city water, city sewer, zoning, and floodplain topography. Uh, most people that buy land know what they're doing, at least what I've experienced. So you don't really run into a lot of issues with people um, asking you a lot of questions right. that you don't know the answer to because they kind of already know. Yeah. And that's what I found as well, Steve. I mean, it's really, really interesting because like uh, the first couple that I did, I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to call down. I'm going to talk to the zoning department. I'm going to talk to the neighborhood services department. I'm going to find out all these things, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. They never asked me any of it. <laughs> The buyers never asked me anything. Yeah. They, they were going to do it themselves, right? Because that's part yeah, of Yeah, they're going to verify the everything. The only due diligence yeah. they do is maybe three or four calls that they make. They give a thumbs up. Now they now you assign the deal to them. <laughs> really, for real. And, and it, it, obviously this is different if somebody's trying to do a big subdivision or trying to do, you know, split yeah. it a ton of times. But honestly, when it comes down – now, this is – I, I think it's real important to kind of distinguish what we mean by land. These are in town. Right, these are what would be considered infill, I N F I L L, infill lots where you actually literally like build a, like if you're driving in your neighborhood and you see an empty lot, that's what we're talking about, right? We're not talking about stuff that's zoned commercial, we're not talking about stuff that's zoned agricultural or in industrial, we're talking about residential lots in town, or maybe we've been doing some great things on the outskirts. Joseph Miranda, I was telling Steve, yeah. Joseph Miranda here in my office locked up 20 lots in town <laughs> here and is selling them between two and $6,000 each, and they he can't keep them. I mean, he, there you he, go. they just go so fast, but nobody thinks to think about land, but it's like anything else. I think if you understand anything from Tom Kroll and wholesaling, it's not about real estate. It is about the people. It is about their motivation. We are just a pawn shop. We are getting it at this price, and we're selling it at twenty grand more, ten grand more, five yep. grand more. And I think land is the is such an untapped resource. I really do. Yeah, it's true. And one thing I've noticed is a lot of sellers don't realize the value of their land as much as they realize the value of their house. Hundred percent. Yeah, because so what's what, what's the Zillow for land? There's no Z land Zillow, yeah. right? They go up. Tax, the tax assessment um and usually that's not it's either way too high or way too low yeah so. well and and it's unemotional it's unemotional yeah. right and you and, and let's really just let's let's talk about how you talk to these people so you and these are smaller deals but some of them are huge we i did one that was seventeen thousand five hundred, and we did another one that was thirty two thousand. i mean some of these we did some that were five thousand but you did a couple that were what how, how big were they i've I've done probably seven or eight that were in the three to 6,000 range. And I've passed up on, and when I say passed up, I mean, we took them down and bought them to build on yeah. that would have paid me 20 to 30,000 each uh, just from the subdividing them. Cause you know, I got, I, I actually just, I got a new construction house closing Wednesday that if I would have sold the lot, I got both. It was one lot and I got it under contract for 20,000, but we got two lots out of it. And each one of those lots was worth twenty to twenty-five by itself. Yeah. So that's a forty to fifty thousand dollar wholesale fee, um, or not forty to fifty thousand, twenty to twenty-five thousand dollar wholesale fee um, that we just decided to pass on and, and build on. Awesome. So give me some juice. Give me give me a deal that you literally picked up the phone and uh, cold called somebody and and got a deal. Let's let's let let's let's keep our budget low now when it comes to getting deals. Let's use our let's use our voice, our, our sweat equity, you're right, our, our proactive being on offense. Let's talk about something juicy. Give me give me a good deal. Let's talk about one. Okay, so when I first joined I had um, I did calls for about a week. I didn't land anything, uh, but I wanted to outsource it as soon as possible. So I did it just enough to kind of figure out how to work the mojo dialer and get everything, you know, here's some rejection and, and just kind of see what they're going to go through. Um, so I would say about a month ago, a lady called or we called a lady 
uh, Tonita, and she had a house. Eeyore, you need to get, get in that. Uh, we had a house that her brother had owned for three years. Uh, it was vacant, falling apart. A tree had just fallen on it, and she wanted it gone. She lived in Raleigh, which is about two and a half hours away. Tired of dealing with it, tired of paying the bills on it, cutting the grass, all that good stuff. Um, so I followed up with her, uh, basically just broke down the numbers for her. Um, you know, this is what I need to get it at to resell it. Um, this is what it's going to need in repairs probably. Um, you know, this is where I need to be. She went and talked to her brother who was a part owner on it. Yeah. And we, we agreed at 70,000 about six hours later. I mean, it was very quick. Uh, sent her the contract uh, via right signature for electronic signatures. Um, uh, I'd say about a week later, someone was under contract to buy it for 81 five. Uh, so we had a $10,000 spread on there. Uh, when it actually closed, the uh, attorney had forgot to put a couple fees on the <laughs> buyer side from the seller. So I just took it out of my assignment and it came out with about 9,600. Yep. Uh, but I don't know. It just, it was just easy, just the easy, just, you know, yeah, so call them, get is, it under contract. Is, so you, you had somebody calling for you? This is like a phone prospector that you, 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 uh, you pay on a weekly basis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have three uh, Jamaican girls who call one in the morning from 8 to 12 and two in the afternoon from 4 to 8. What do you pay? Um, and they get, I pay them $8 an hour. Uh, and they just brought on a leads manager that I'm at eight dollars an hour. She works for four hours a day, Monday through Friday. I'm and this is just me doing things without really knowing what I'm doing. But um, I'm not too pleased with her, um, so I'm gonna have to figure that out. But sure. I'm, I probably will end up getting rid of that and just taking back over lead follow up until I can outsource it to someone in house. So you have three Jamaicans making eight dollars an hour calling for for you, and you make a ninety six hundred dollar check or wire. Yeah, yeah, it was a check. <laughs> I love it. Hold on a second. Yeah, I love it. So tell me about your business moving forward. What does it look like? How how are things going? How's two thousand nineteen shaping up? Two thousand nineteen has been good. Um, when I first started, so I started the second week of January and I had based everything um, off of the 2018 projections that you had made like last year. Yep. And I'll be honest, my numbers were a little off. They were about half of what, of what the projection was. So my own projections for what I was going to do were way off. And that kind of hit me. The reality kind of hit me in the face. But, you know, I just I really don't have any other option than wholesaling. So it's like fight or, fight or flight, sink or swim. So oh, yeah. I just kind of going and figuring it out. Um, we've got four or five deals right now under contract uh, in the pipeline. I just got one under contract for 12 grand the other day. Um, all thanks to the one little tip I got from you of uh, anchoring low because I still got that realtor brain wanting yeah. to give people what their house is worth. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really just trying to get myself out of it. Keep the, keep the bills consistently coming in uh, and then build a team that's not too costly, yep. but efficient and, and, and keeps me working in the business at a minimum. Um, I really like, I really like how, how you guys do things, getting yourself out of the business and kind of looking at it from a 10,000 foot level. So that's what I want to do. It's just a matter of figuring it out and, and getting there, but it'll happen. Well, it takes time. And once it's all about the momentum, yeah. it's all about the momentum, yeah. momentum, momentum. And once all of your, like once your day is just overflowing with all these things that you're doing, you start picking off the things that you're worst at hiring those out. And then you start picking out the, the, the most important and then boom, you got a business you're running, you're making over a million bucks a year. Life's good. You're keeping yeah. a bunch of it and uh, you, and you get to cherry pick the best deals and you get to build houses yeah. and you get to buy land and you get to buy apartments or whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. it's, wholesaling is the bridge that gets you there and it's just a phenomenal business. I love it. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So well, as we wrap this thing up, why don't you give some advice to somebody that, um, why don't you give some land advice? Okay. We always do okay. give advice on somebody that's starting out, but maybe you can, if somebody's never done a land deal, what advice would you give them if they've got a motivated seller on land? 
just get it under contract. <laughs> Honestly, just get it under contract for whatever price you can and try to sell it. If it's too high, you just learn something, you know, um, that's pretty much like, I didn't, I didn't go to my dad when I was doing this and ask him every time I had a question, you know, I tried to figure it out. So really just go out there and, and get it under contract. Don't try to think you need to know everything before you do this, because as soon as you take a step, you're going to realize that there's another step you have to take. And then after you take that one, there's going to be another one that, that, that pops its head up, but you're not going to know unless you just start walking. Yeah. Um, so just, just, just do it, just get under contract and try to sell it. Um, a good way to find land that I've found, um, I've tried to pull land list and it always comes up kind of shoddy. Um, and you can get a VA to do this, but I'll just go on the GIS, whatever my County GIS site is and just all the bl empty parcels in the areas that I like, I'll just click them, yep. put it in a spreadsheet, get yep. it skip traced and then call them up. I've, I've made money definitely a good bit of money uh just doing that and you don't have to pull a list or anything yeah so if you have a tight budget just get on your gis system uh and get all the all the addresses you need they're all right there parcel numbers i mean you can make five thousand uh, literally i feel like lance so you can make five thousand dollars in 30 days so easily just because no one's really doing it i know it i know it i love it Anybody that wants to get a hold of you that lives in the beautiful state of North Carolina, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, uh, they can get a Instagram is good or my cell phone number. Um, my what? Instagram is Steve Kaiser 12. Steve Kaiser 12. Got it. Yep. K I S E R 12. Awesome. That's it. Steve, thank you so much for sharing some of your land wisdom. I think this, this is going to be a huge podcast when people look back and they've done you know, so. 50 land deals and they're like, that Steve hey. guy, man, he just told me to just <laughs> go for it, not overthink it. I love it. And for anybody out there that's looking to join the most proactive group in real estate, go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. Get in, look at the page there, check out the video, check out the testimonials, check out what's involved there. If it's the right fit for you, I'll be working with you personally, and I look forward to it. Um, Steve, tell, say goodbye to everybody. See you guys. Thanks again for listening. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. <laughs> <laughs> you did awesome, man. See you guys. Rhino Tribe, you guys are the absolute best. I don't care if it's on, um, on Facebook or if it's with this podcast or with every. Everything, you guys are unbelievably supportive on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see this video, go to Brent Daniels Real Estate on YouTube. Check it out. Check out all the interviews. And until next time, guys, I encourage you to talk to people. See ya. Thanks, man.